Hello, welcome to another episode from Hall of Flowers Ventura 2024 with Respect My Region. My name is Shelby and I'm here with Ariana Bean from The Higher Path Los Angeles. Hello. Thank you for joining us today. Nice We're here. I've been a great time. Yeah. So I just want to get to know you a little more and yeah. hear about your start in the cannabis industry. What got you to The Higher Path? Absolutely. Well, I... Uh, it feels like a lifetime ago because all of us who are in the cannabis industry know that a year feels like 10. So this was like 100 years ago. Um, I moved out from Boston for to pursue music. And this was during the pre-ICO days. So we're talking like 2013, 2014. It's a very different world. I came in around 2012. As okay, well. yes. Yeah, exactly. And I just, uh, back in Boston in college, like weed had just been decriminalized. So I was just in love and it was so great to be able to smoke and learn more about it. And then I got to L.A. and I was like, oh, my God, I'd love to work at a cannabis store. And so back then, the na- where the higher path is now, uh, it was from the heart at the time. And they weren't grandfathered in. So they had to, the location was where the license wasn't. So I started there as a receptionist. And that was like the 12-hour paid in cash days. You know what I mean? Yeah. Way, way back <laughs> when. Yeah. And, uh, and so I just worked there and I worked up to be a manager. And then uh, the higher path took over from the heart. And Jared Kylo, the the owner, was just absolutely incredible from NorCal, taught me all about CBD, taught me all about the education and the plant and how it could heal and how it could help people. And yeah, I was hooked. I got hooked on CBD. You know how I love CBD uh, and tinctures and topicals. And it was a complete game changer for me because, again, that was back in the medical days. So you had patients coming in who it was changing their life and you could see it happen weeks, months, years at a time. And I just wanted to help people. So the higher path, it was all just by, by chance or it was destiny. And it was kind of meant to be. And yeah, the higher path, it changed my life. And, and it was a predominantly female staff at the time. And um, it was great to work with women and learn more about the plant. And uh, now looking back now, it literally feels like a, a, an eternity ago. Yeah. Because everything now is like, look at where we are. Look at what we did over the weekend. Look at Yummy Karma. And it's just like... Look, it's so incredible that in 10 years, something can just evolve and change. So the higher path was basically my entry point into the industry and completely shaped my my understanding of what it could be, what it was, and really innovated my my love for the cannabis plant. What's your current role title? Um, so I've been on and off with the higher path for, the, for a decade. Um, and basically education and training was what I just fell in love with and fell uh, fell into and then fell in love with that as well. So uh, working directly with the owner and, and the upper management staff, their education and training has been, it's been a playground to really beta test what works and what doesn't and how to get the highest ROI um, during an international pandemic um, when people don't want to come in. Um, or how do you balance, you know, a medicinal world with a, a rec world? And what does that mean? And I know back in 2018, you know, Jared called me and he was like, it's not pre-ICO day, it's not medical anymore, but like, that's what's missing. We don't want people to come in and just buy weed for the, the sake of buying weed. Like, I, we, we still want to help people. And how do you how do you walk that line between let me upsell you on a tincture because it's going to help you with, you know, your sickness or what you're trying to deal with. But like, also, how do I get you what you're looking for and what you need and not be a sleazy car salesman? Yeah. So, yeah, education and training with a higher path is, is definitely what I've, I have I grew into and what I own. And it's just such a great um, establishment and store to really um, try different things out in an industry in a state where it's trying. What has been working? What has been working? Oh, good. Let's go with the positive. Um, well, I think what has been working is understanding that the butt tender is your champion as a brand. Um, understanding that a well-trained butt tender that can uh, execute um, a recommendation uh, and a sale under a certain amount of time, especially when you have a high volume and a high wait time within your store, can help you get increase your overall volume of sales. Um it's very interesting because I've worked with several different um, cannabis brands or dispensaries over the years. And dispensaries still, for some reason, people aren't sold on like, oh, if you invest into your education and training, it's going to help with your overall ROI over time. And I, I am a key believer that it, it will and it does. Um, so what does work is when you're onboarding your bud tender, giving them an extensive training and not just overall cannabis education. 
but how to sell cannabis and how to, uh, how to, sorry, I got distracted by that. I know. I know. And then you did this, so I thought my boss, I got done. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Redo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, what does work in a dispensary with education and training? Um, making sure your staff, whether they're from cannabis or they're not, they are confident in their customer service and sales techniques. Um, and they also, even if they don't know the product by heart, because let's face it, you get trained and you get onboarded within a week. You know, a lot of people can't afford to do more than that. And extensive training would be two weeks. But again, this is industry right now. We're doing, we're doing what we can with yeah. what we have, yeah. you know? Um, but you really aren't like a fully like, fledged experience bartender until what like three months maybe two months depending on how many how many hours you're working um so confidence in teaching bartenders that even if you don't know the answer if you know the fundamental values of cannabis you everything is very similar yeah. you know it's maybe sometimes the branding is a bit different so you can really dance your way around anything just understanding what cannabinoids do what the terpenes do and how to basically get out of the consumer what they're looking to get. Mm -hmm. And I actually uh, quite recently launched a proprietary education and training guide called the Green Guide, and I've made it with, with Jared. And that's something that we just onboarded a few of their employees with a few months ago. And that's that decade of experience of being like, okay, sales and customer service in Canvas right now, it's not like any other retail or medical industry. It's very different. There's a high turnover rate. People, you need to be able to understand if they want to talk or they don't want to talk. What are they looking for? What's their price range? And then, again, looking at the SKUs that are on the shelf. Well, what do you need to sell? What do you want to sell? What isn't selling? And then how do you move it? Maybe it's because of lack of education and training. Um, and then also what really, really works is uh, understanding brand support and how do you best work with your brand? Because I think a lot of the time brands will do anything and everything to help. Um, and then sometimes the dispensaries are like, no, we do it this way. But if you can have a cohesive, mutually beneficial relationship with a brand and understand like you have to um, sample the staff out, you have to come and like be relevant with the staff so they know who you are. Because a lot of the times with branding and brands, it's the staff believes in the person mm -hmm. who represents the brand. Yeah. And that's why they want to sell it. That's yeah. why they want to support it. It's not like, hey, this is a really great eighth and we grow it and it's sustainable. And it's like, no, but I know you. I know Shelby. And I'm selling it because I love Shelby and I love the brand. And that's and that's honestly, that's what really, really works. But a lot of people right now, you know, L.A. traffic, some people are up north and they can't yeah. come down. So it is really tricky. Uh, but I definitely think staying relevant with the staff, giving staff samples, doing in-store demos, if there is proper customer volume that's coming through and then really doing an education and training and knock it out of the park with your uh with your bud tender goes a really long way remote trainings like you said just said people from up north it's hard for them to get down to la have you seen success with uh norcal brands doing a remote training or how, mm -hmm. how what advice do you can give them to get through if they can't make it down right um that's a really great question i think if you as a brand have um have an employee that's representing you that has a, I hate to say a great personality, but if they are confident and they're charming and they care about what they're doing, uh, that's going to absolutely shine through the training. If they're excited and kind of make it fun. So I mean, there's data, there was an experiment that was done that, you know, when you're having fun and learning, your retention percentage okay. of what you're learning is way higher. And then if you're, yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, then if you're bored and you're sitting there, so there's different ways to interact with people. Asking questions on Zoom is always the best way, in my opinion. It's like, okay, so Shelby, I see you down in the corner. Like, what do you think? And engaging with the butt tenders really helps. Sending the product samples ahead of your virtual training is really, really helpful because that way they can try it. Um, and just making it a bit more interactive. Sending food beforehand so okay. they can eat yeah. is really <laughs> valuable because you a hungry butt tender is yeah. not a butt tender that's going to want to learn. True. Um, but then after that virtual session, like having a continuous kind of interaction with them, whether it is like sponsoring like a pizza day or whatever, salad day, whatever is, you know, yeah. people are eating these days um, is going to go a long way. So you can still make an impact from afar, but it, you just have to be consistent. And you, you're, people can tell when you're not being authentic yeah. because they have hundreds of brands that they're working with. And you can tell when a brand cares, when you remember people's names, when you're sending them stuff in the mail. Like, mm -hmm. you can really make it authentic and make people feel special, um, even if you're not physically there. 
Thank you for all that insight. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah. And congratulations on making the green guy. That's Thank awesome. You. Yes. I am about that. Coming somewhere to a retail store near you. Yeah. So what's next for you? Oh, uh, great question. Uh, I think if we're looking just at 2024, we're looking specifically within the California space. I think I would really just love to utilize the experience that I have and the tools and the strengths that I have to work with brands, work with retails, work with everyone that's in the space that's trying to be successful and meet them in the middle okay. and formulate and figure out ways in which we can all come together and just make it easier. Um, work smarter, not harder is like my saying of 2024. Um, and so I think uh, strategies of, hey, you know, how do we work together to do events to offset certain kind of overhead costs that we're all dealing with. It's not just brands, it's not just retail, it's POS systems, it's delivery services, it's uh, delivery, it's, it's test, testing labs, it's everybody. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, utilizing the green guide and launching it in a way where it can help everyone and save on that marketing budget, save on those labor costs, um, is something that I think would be really beneficial. And I also just started recently working with the UCBA, which is the United Cannabis Business Association. <laughs> and pre-COVID, uh, do you remember the UCBA back in the day? I don't think pre-COVID days. I was in the desert, you know, I was okay. just in my little bubble back in the day. No, so, no. But I've been getting more familiar with them lately. Well, pre-COVID, it was like an incredible quarterly bud tender education where it was hundreds of bud tenders and brands who could come and you could sample out the staff and you could teach them. So instead of having to train 50 different accounts, you were able to get them all there in three days. It was great to meet buyers, do discounts, really get your foot in the door as a brand. And then there was always like the buyers club that you these fire maps of events that happened downtown. And so I think we're at a point now in the industry, but what, whether kind of what you want for yourself, I think we have to sit and go, well, what, that's what I want, but what do we want collectively as an industry and how are we going to survive 2024? Because it's expensive for everybody. You know what I mean? So how do we utilize again what we have? And if we can come together, work together in a way where we can have a little bit of trust, a little bit of compassion and go, all right, so what are the regulations? What are the bills? What are things that are happening? What's happening with taxes? Do we understand how much money we, we're going to have to pay or, you know, not we, but people as, you know, if you're a brand, if you're a dispensary, it's very confusing. And then looking for at the state of California and it's like, okay, how do we, how do we stop bad things from happening in regards to uh, certain bills that are going to get passed or going to make it even more difficult for all of us? Are there bills that we want to get passed? And that's where the UCBA can really help. So, yeah, I'm really wanting to put my effort and my experience into different companies and businesses and establishments that really want to, you know, work smarter, not harder. And then teamwork makes the dream work, you know. That's, so that's the, uh, yeah, that's going to be 2024. What are you getting out of Hall of Flowers? Like, do you have any goals or are you just... So the last time I was at Hall of Flowers was, again, pre-COVID when I worked for a company called Bebo back in the day and that was up in Santa Rosa so this experience for me is very different because I'm able to walk around and really see all the different brands and it's like the Coachella for weaves it's insane yeah. it's so it's so overwhelming in the best way possible um I just wanted to meet as many brands that I could I'm you know wondering what they're going through what they're experiencing and what they need and and how we can help um me myself and I and then also like through the green guide and through the UCBA I mean, various events you know how can we work together and and kind of make it work so i've seen a few brands where i'm like this is cool this is different because it's also nice and refreshing to see something you haven't seen before or see brands that you know back from way long ago still kicking it and being successful and still being relevant that makes me really happy too awesome well we'll let you get back to the floor thank, thank you, you so much for talking to us yeah come and follow along with what you're doing and and the so roles that the work Sorry, the companies you work for. Right. Uh, great question. Uh, and you could uh, membership at the UCBA.com is a great way to get in touch if you're if you're wanting to become a member for the UCBA. And then for me to get in touch with me, uh, you can do education at the higher path dot com uh, and then stay tuned for more green guide details. Thank you, Ariana. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Backmyregion.com from Hollow Flowers Venture 2024. This was also powered by Treed. <laughs>